In this chapter, we'll get to know EECS, the Inner Asterisk Exchange Protocol. We'll discuss its background and basic capabilities in the first module. In the next two modules, we'll follow the signaling for a typical EECS call and then see how to configure EECS connections in Asterisk. EECS was written by Mark Spencer to work with Asterisk and to improve on some of the disadvantages present in SIP. It's called version 2 because there was an earlier version that has been deprecated for several years now. These days, anyone who says they're using EECS really means EECS version 2. The EECS version 2 protocol is an open standard defined in IETF RFC 5456. If you've been through the SIP chapter, you know that SIP was designed as a generic communications protocol that happens to be popular for telephony, even though it wasn't specifically designed for that purpose. EECS truly was designed as a telephony protocol, so it's more lightweight and in many ways simpler than SIP. That's not to say that EECS is better than SIP. Each protocol has its own advantages, and we're not here to judge. EECS messages are somewhat more compact than SIP messages. In SIP, an invite message is sent to initiate a call. The word invite is spelled out in ASCII characters in the message. In EECS, the corresponding message to initiate a call is the new message. But instead of spelling out the word new in ASCII, EECS represents it in binary encoding. This saves a little bandwidth and makes it a bit easier to write an independent EECS implementation. On the other hand, it can make it harder for a human to decode EECS frames in a packet capture. Luckily, this is only rarely necessary, and there are networking tools that are EECS aware that can interpret the binary coding of EECS messages for you. We'll look at the EECS messaging in detail in the next module. One of the biggest appeals of EECS is that it sidesteps the NAT problems inherent in SIP. Remember that SIP uses a suite of several protocols to handle initiating sessions, describing sessions, and carrying media. These protocols don't all use the same networking ports, so it can be challenging to coordinate SIP endpoints to send and receive messages necessary on all the various ports. EECS avoids this by handling all the aspects of a call on a single port. EECS provides all the pieces necessary to set up and tear down calls and carry media, so there are no other protocols necessary. Because of this, it can be much easier to configure EECS endpoints to communicate reliably. EECS isn't nearly as susceptible to one-way audio problems as SIP is. In basic terms, EECS is a VoIP protocol like SIP and several others. It can set up and tear down calls, and it provides a way for endpoints to pass audio, video, or other media to each other. It can also be used to trunk between EECS-capable endpoints, even if they're not phones. In fact, one of the most common uses of EECS is to trunk two Astra servers to each other and route calls between them. EECS has not been widely adopted on VoIP handsets, but it is reasonably popular for server-to-server -server connections. Because Asterisk can bridge channels using different technologies, it's possible for two SIP phones connected to different Asterisk servers to communicate with a leg between the Asterisk servers carried by EECS rather than SIP. EECS also has two additional features that make it very appealing in certain circumstances. First, EECS has a very efficient trunking feature that maximizes the number of simultaneous calls that can be carried in a given amount of bandwidth. Depending on the codec used, the actual media is often responsible for less than half the total bandwidth of a VoIP call, with the rest consisting of IP and other headers. Most VoIP protocols transmit media using a large number of quite small packets. EECS trunking improves bandwidth efficiency by putting more media in each frame using fixed size headers. It's not feasible to save up several audio frames from a single call to send at once because of the additional latency that this adds. But it is possible to have small audio frames from several different calls all packaged into the same packet. This saves on overhead by eliminating many packets worth of IP headers. Of course, this only works for the each channels that have the same source and destination as each other. The media frames are basically carpooling to the common destination, and the benefit is lost if the destinations aren't the same. EECS trunking is not enabled by default, but can be enabled and configured using options in EECS.conf. The sample configuration file offers details on how to set this up, though at its simplest, you can just set trunk equals yes on both sides of the connection. Like Asterisk, EECS was developed and evolved by Digium. Because of this, EECS was specifically written to support some special Asterisk features. One of these is rich dial command specification. With SIP, all you can do is send a call to another SIP endpoint without specifying any dial plan routing instructions. SIP doesn't inherently support the concept of a dial plan. 
Eeks, however, has some built-in awareness of Aster style plan and knows about extensions and contexts. Using Eeks, you can request to be connected to a specific location in the dial plan of a called Aster server. Of course, the remote system has some security controls that determine whether or not you're allowed to do this, but the point for now is that Eeks makes it an option where other VoIP protocols don't. Let's move on now to watch an Eeks call flow.